one of the benefits of knowing plants, or at least being able to identify them year round, is the ability to find them year round. So for example, this is Ceanothus americanus, New Jersey tea or red root, from Alabama with our Americanus species, all the way out west, you have different species in this genus, and they all work the same. In the south, this is an old-time edible plant and powerful medicinal plant. When I was first working with Tommy Bass Learning Herbs, he showed me this, along with yellow root, as one of my first introduction plants, and told me a story of how he had a fellow in about 1920 came to him that had irritable bowel syndrome so bad that he was about to die with just pure water coming out. So Tommy told him about, as he called it, red root. And he said, you know, fella, you can go get you some red root and that'll fix you right up. And I've got to go to town. I can't sh take you out there, but I'll show you where it is. And he, about two weeks later, the guy came back and he said, I was so sick that I was crawling on my hands and knees out in that field all I could do was just chew on the leaves. An hour later, I was able to get up and walk and go home. And he said, I dug some later, and I had never been sick again with this stuff. And it was that good of a, a remedy for the IBS. He had a baby taken to him one year that was just pure water coming out. The doctors in this area sent the child's mother to him, said, if you can't help the child, it's going to die. And so Tommy told him about New Jersey tea, they fixed it, and the last I heard back in the 90s, this, this girl was still alive and doing well. It's great for irritable bowel syndrome with diarrhea. It's a wonderful lymphatic herb. It's good for any kind of stomach trouble, great cough medicine. You name it, it's got a multiple variety of uses for it. And the leaves taste like Tetley or Lipton tea with no caffeine. So. The leaves can be used for IBS as a lymphatic, for cough medicine, but they're nowhere near as strong as the root, and the root is where it gets the name red root. So you see a pretty spindly little bush. Doesn't look like much, but once you dig down, it swells out into these big, beautiful red roots, hence the name. And it's a hard one to transplant because the root grows to China. But if you get it in the wintertime, it's much easier to transplant. You'll have a lot better success rate with it. Grows in just old cutover area, sides of the road, railroad embankment, sides of the interstate. You get out to the Midwest and some areas out west, it's much more common. Here it's very scattered, and so you have to know what you're looking for. But it's a great, great plant to learn. Beautiful plant to put in your garden, but it's one of my favorite medicinal plants. At least the dirt's soft. What? At least the soil's soft. Yeah, this may be a good one to transplant. Yep. It, oh, that's going to be several. You could probably divide it. Fine tea for energy. <laughs> and a good shovel. Yeah, that's a, that's a, yeah, you'll definitely be able to divide that one. This one's called red root. Isn't that pretty? It's a beautiful piece of root. That's 
what you're after. <laughs> it'll, it'll make a beautiful tea. This is red and burgundy colors as can be. It reminds me of sassafras tea. It does a lot. Wise. And the look is very close. It's just a darker red. I can, on red roots, you can see where it gets the name, that beautiful red color when you peel the outer bark off. You'll also hear it called red shank, red root, New Jersey tea, uh, wild snowball, snowball bush, any number of different things. One of the things I didn't mention earlier, too, is that it's another herb for the liver. It's a good liver herb besides being a lymphatic. So it has some excellent uses in dealing with immunity issues. Not an immunomodulator, but it is an immune stimulant, mildly speaking. But it's a really pretty plant. 